I started off just being trying to avoid sugar. Yeah. And then I looked at everything else. Yeah. I was like, what is that? <laughs> mm -hmm. I can't even pronounce that, let yeah. alone like put it in my body and think it's actually going to do anything good. Hi, I'm Kaya Perowit, one of the producers of the Doctor's Pharmacy podcast. We are all programmed to like sugar, and having a sugar addiction is not a moral failing, nor is it due to lack of willpower. Unfortunately, we live in a society in which your hormones, taste buds, and brain chemistry have been hijacked by the food industry, and it's making us sick. Earlier this year, Dr. Hyman sat down with actors Keegan Allen and Tom Hopper, who each overcame their own health and weight issues by breaking their sugar addictions. I had a friend who was the uh, worked in the Obama administration in charge of the food programs and the food labeling, and he's like, the, the, the food companies don't want to have sugar listed as the number one ingredient on the label. Yeah. So they'll put yeah. five different kinds of sugar because the list of ingredients is in order of the amount, Yeah. right? But if you if you have let's say you know wheat as the first ingredient and then you have like five kinds of sugar actually sugar is the most predominant mm. ingredient they just because they don't call it you know sugar yeah or they it's don't hidden. have the same kind of sugar it's just a it's just a loophole in the law that allows the food companies to get away with right. with bamboozling us yeah and it's 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 pretty bad and then I was I was uh, shopping the other day I was in CVS and getting something I don't know what and I looked over and I saw this this big freezer of Haagen Dazs ice cream and I have oh, like yeah. a weakness for Haagen Dazs ice cream. But I don't eat that often. And and, uh, and they said, it's non-dairy haagen -Dazs. And I'm like, oh, cool. And I walk over <laughs> and I pull it out. It says, plant-based, gluten-free, yeah. dairy-free. And I'm like, oh, this is health food, right? Turn yeah. the label over and it's like high fructose corn syrup mm. and processed ingredients. And I'm like, what is this? But this is the one thing I wanted to ask you then. As a doctor, as someone that does this, as an advocate, goes around and, and travels and talks to everybody, what would you say to the younger generation if they want to start somewhere? What's the first step? to really recognizing, not just like reading labels, but what is the real first step that can be a tangible first step for someone who maybe lives in rural America? I mean, Lenox, mm -hmm. yeah, I've been to Lenox before. I've been there. I know yeah. what that place is like. <laughs> I'm surprised that you came out of Lenox and you're like, you know what, I'm gonna do this and bring it to the world. Yeah. What was it in your journey that was the first step? Well, I used to be vegetarian too. And I, uh, <laughs> and I loved sugar and starch and bread and, Pasta, you know, I, I bought into the whole low fat movement. And you were doing it for health reasons? You were yes, vegetarian health, because you thought that was healthier? Yes, health reasons, yes. Um, and I thought this was the way to go. And, and uh, you know, it's interesting now that I've sort of cleaned up my diet and got rid of the, the starch and the sugar mm. for the most part. You know, if I look at pictures of myself without a shirt when I'm 30, I'm like way scrawnier and like kind of flabbier than I was, than I am today at 60. Right, mm. yeah, with, yeah. With, And I don't do that much exercise. You know, right. like if I'm in the gym like five times a month weightlifting, that's a lot, right. you know? I do yoga, I'll do other stuff, but I just, you know, just because I'm busy, I'm planning on doing more. <laughs> yeah, it's tough, yeah, Maybe yeah. I'll get you to help me, but you look like you know what you're doing. <laughs> uh, and, and I, and I uh, um, then I got very sick and I started to sort of look at what I was doing and had mm. to sort of shift. And as the science changed, I began to sort of look at, you know, because I, I think ideology is so problematic in nutrition. There are all these diet wars, all these people in conflict with each other, paleo, vegan, this, that. Yeah. And it, it's kind of crazy because- A lot of little religions, aren't they? Yeah. It is, but you know, I, I said, let's get let's get away from that because, um, you know, I, I, I came up with this term pegan, which is a joke. Yeah, yeah, it was yeah. like paleo vegan. Yeah. And, uh, and I, I just published this book, Food Fix, and it was number one in paleo and number one in vegan books. <laughs> yeah. And I thought, this is go. good. Because we have far more in common with each other than with the standard American processed diet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you can be a chips and soda vegan, right? Or you can be a cheeseburger, whatever, bacon, yeah. paleo, but that's not necessarily either of them are good, right? Yeah, it's, yeah. it's more going towards whole food. So your question was, what would I say to people? I, I think, you know, it, it, it's really easy to just sort of start simply. You know, if if you're eating industrial food, like stop doing that, right? If you look yeah, at the ingredients one. and you see refined flour, soybean oil or high fructose corn syrup just don't eat it mm -hmm. if you can the next step would be look for non-gmo certified foods right not because gmo we know is that bad for you it may be it may not be there's a lot of controversy about that but it's a form of agriculture that's destructive to the environment and there's often other things in there like glyphosate which is yeah. roundup which they yeah. spray on 70 different crops from canola to corn to wheat to soy and that is definitely harmful for our microbiome. 
uh, it destroys our gut my bacteria, which affects everything. Mm-hmm. And uh, it's linked to cancer. Uh, and and the, there was a $2 billion lawsuit that got set, a yeah, settlement that the judgment yeah. about Roundup or glyphosate or weed killer. Uh, and so, so just be aware that if you just stop those things, you're, the quality of your you're diet You're already making a yeah, huge I mean, yeah. difference yeah. to your body, yeah. Yeah, whatever you do. And so those are really simple things we can do. And then if you can, try to you know look at what you're eating. Is it is it whole food? I mean, is mm. it something you can recognize, like an yeah. almond or almond butter? It's like not that many steps of processing because most food gets processed in some way. We cook it. or Yeah, it's all got some kind of mum mam- yeah, intervention, I mean, yeah. Yeah, but if you, you know, most of the time I just eat stuff that looks like what it is. You know, broccoli is a broccoli. You know, yeah. piece of fish is a piece of fish. Grass-fed meat is well, a piece Well, I was caught like, what I said to him when, when we first started, when, when he was <laughs> a pre-diabetic vegan <laughs> sick man in Australia um, I, I call it the uh, the of the earth diet yeah so if you're eating stuff that the earth naturally provides then you're you're never really in, in harm's way right you know um, if how many it's not, steps did it take to get from the field to the fork yeah right exactly if you can yeah. trace them all okay but if you don't know how it got like that yeah like, you know. then yeah we've we got a problem yeah, yeah. Um, the ingredients list is your ingredient Right, a sweet potato yeah. is a sweet potato. A piece of chicken breast is a piece of chicken breast. Yeah, there's no ingredient list on that. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah. Right, it is what it is. Right, and and I think <laughs> the the other thing I found as well, which is an important thing to talk about, I think, is how people who do make the shift they have to go through a process themselves. Like I know, I went through a process where I kept going back. I kept mm. going, oh, but I want that. I still yeah. that addiction to that kind of food doesn't just mm. disappear. I didn't do it overnight. Yeah, my wife always says this to me. She was like. You know, when I'm talking to people saying, you just do this, you just do that. She's like, Tom, you have to remember that you took two years probably to, to just not eat any of this stuff anymore. Yeah. So your taste buds have to change. Yeah. You have to give your taste buds time to yeah. to make that change and really know what things taste like again. Like broccoli yeah. can taste freaking awesome. Right. It's so mm. true. When people get off that for a week even, and then they have blueberries, they go, my God, this is, Candy. you know like candy right yeah. and i i think people don't understand how how hard it is because of the biology of sugar yeah right? it's not a moral failing right it's not that you're weak willed but yeah. you cannot overcome your biology with willpower it no. will fail every time yeah so you have to use science and the science of sugar is fascinating because it it, it not only drives uh, mechanisms that make you gain weight because it produces more insulin, so it stores belly fat. Yeah, it makes you hungry. It slows your metabolism and it locks the fat in the fat cell, so it can't get out. It's like a one-way turnstile. Wow. Like in the some way, mm-hmm. can't get out. And <clears throat> and when you look at the biology on the brain, it's even scarier. So in really well-controlled studies, they've shown that by looking at brain imaging and blood tests. Eating the exact amount of calories, protein, fat, carbs, and fiber in a shake, like a milkshake, they just swapped out the level of the kind of carbohydrate so that one raises your blood sugar a lot and one doesn't. It's like a slowly digested starch. When they did that, they found that the brain imaging showed that the addiction center, which is stimulated by heroin or cocaine or whatever, gets lit up like crazy by the sugar and their insulin goes up, their blood sugar goes up, their adrenaline goes up. So sugar causes your adrenaline to go up, your cortisol, which is the stress hormone. So it literally creates a biologic stress. The interesting thing, and I wanted to to volley this back to you then, with, um, with your immune system, Sugar is not the only culprit to lowering your immune system. Mm-hmm. There's these are there are canola oils. There are what what other it's processed also lifestyle foods? as well. Like I lifestyle. find you know like stress fatigue. and stuff, stress and fatigue and lack yeah. of sleep are ones that can that can drop it for sure. Yeah. But that's 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 that cycle. Is that like yeah. if you eat sugar, if you eat processed foods, then you don't really sleep that well. Then you don't really move that well, and it's just uh, yeah. Well, the other part about eating a diet of processed food and sugar is it depletes your nutrients, mm. right? It it actually doesn't have the vitamins and minerals and nutrients you need to metabolize stuff. So the people who are often the most nutritionally deficient are the most obese, Mm. which is kind of surprising. How can you be malnourished and obese at the same time? Uh, The nutritional density of our food is so important Mm. and processed food sure just doesn't have it and sugar depletes our nutrients like B vitamins. And so when you have low levels of zinc and you have low levels of vitamin D and low levels of omega-3 fats and low levels of iron, vitamin a your immune system can't function mm-hmm. yeah so yeah. In, in the developing world we know very clearly that the kids who die from diarrhea or respiratory infections or measles 
is because they're malnourished. Yeah. If a kid's get measles who's well nourished in America, they're not going to die from it usually. Right. right? Mm-hmm. But in the developing world, these kids die all the time from basic disease because they're so malnourished. Yeah. And I think we are a malnourished country. Ninety percent of us are deficient, and so the best way to build your immune system is to eat whole food. Yeah. Cut out the sugar. Make sure you take your vitamins. Get enough sleep, like you said. Mm. Deal with stress as a huge factor. And I think you know, I I, uh, I think. Something simple like just meditation. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's so powerful. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, it's so a thing that it doesn't I think, have to be woo woo, but yeah, it works. We just don't talk about that enough. People just understand, and the fact that we eat about 152 pounds of sugar per person. Yeah, that's almost half a pound a day. Yeah, it's of crazy. sugar. Well, it's hidden in every <clears throat> single thing that you could pick up. When we were at the gym, yeah, we go to the the bar the the bar at the gym. They yeah. have like a smoothie or yeah. something. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. Everything yeah. that is laid out. That says healthy, organic, gluten free. Yeah. It's so is counterproductive packed. at the gym. And you, you know, they, all everything you see in there, there's like signs for, for Coca Cola in some gyms yeah. and stuff. And there's like, you, awful. You go to those like green smoothie things and you look at the label, it has more sugar than a can of Coke. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. that's just insane. Yeah. And then yeah. people become addicted to it because they're like, well, I'm, I'm eating healthy. I'm drinking this healthy juice. But what they're doing is they're spiking their insulin levels. They're, they're becoming addicted to this fruit, fructose almost. I'm sure that some of it maybe even is a hidden. There's so many different names for hidden sugars yeah. now. Mm. Um, it's we like, just there's like this. 200 names for sugar. If you Google names for sugar, you'll see it'll come up with a list of like 200 different things yeah. that you don't even know are sugar. Yeah. yeah. that's. I mean, that's one of the things that started me on on the journey of like i'm just not going to eat anything that isn't whole food because mm-hmm. i remember <clears> thinking <throat> well there's all this other stuff in there now yeah. like I, I started off just being trying to avoid sugar yeah and then i looked at everything else yeah. and i was like what is that <clears throat> i can't mm-hmm. even pronounce that let yeah. alone like put it in my body and think it's actually going to do anything good so i just i started to just go no i can't i can't yeah. put that in anymore i mean the average american eats three to five pounds of additives every year yeah i mean and it's really deliberate and the and, and the, the biology of, of addiction in the food is not it's not like an emotional response it's not because you have no willpower it really is hijacking your brain chemistry mm-hmm. and your metabolism in ways that we don't really understand and so i i've seen people within a very short time really transform that the the food is medicine theory it, there's so much in that and i think people can really take the the the, the steps forward in terms of a mindset because that's the thing changing mindset is the is the first step like you you saying this you know like you it t- took a while from you and me chatting back and forth mm-hmm. to really go no there is actually something in yeah. this yeah. and changing that mindset so yeah. Once you change that mindset and and just keep driving that through of food is medicine, food is medicine, you'll see the difference. Simple mm-hmm. as that. It's, it's so easy, really, when you yeah. when you get down the road, but you've got to put the steps in place to actually get there. And yeah. that's not easy. You yeah, know? that's like, something I teach all the time is that food isn't just calories, it's information. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And oh, yeah. so are you upgrading your biology or downgrading it with every yeah. bite? And it affects everything, your hormones, yeah. your brain chemistry, your immune system, your microbiome, uh, and every aspect of your health is controlled by what you're eating mm. and it's it's literally like code so it's like you're putting in malware into your biology yeah that's what it is thank you for tuning into this episode of the doctor's pharmacy if you'd like to hear more about the specifics of keegan allen and tom hopper's personal health struggles and how they overcame them i'd encourage you to check out the full-length version of this interview if you enjoyed this episode please consider sharing it with your friends or family and leaving us a comment with your feedback until next time